Okay, so like right off the bat, this game has me feeling like a very particular way, so I didn't even bother shaving for this video. You get like uneven, patchy facial hair, Wayne, for this video. Okay, so confession time, I've never really been much of a Hulk fan. I mean, I've enjoyed the movies he's in. Okay, most of them. But as the majority of comic book fans out there can tell you, you're never really gonna get everything about a character like this just from watching the movies, since the films don't really have the same amount of time that the comic books have to really flesh out the intricacies of what makes them tick. Now that being said, I've never actively disliked him or anything, there's some good stuff here. The struggle of a man fighting against a monster living inside his own body is drama that practically writes itself, but he's just not a character that I've gone out of my way to pursue. I would still like to dig in deeper with the character though, as I'm sure there's plenty of interesting material out there with the ever-loving Hulk in the starring role, and from what I've heard, the interactive medium is no exception. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction has garnered endless praise over the years for the way it really lets you play around with the powers of the Green Boulder those are in its tight, inventive gameplay. It's a game that I've been wanting to look at for a while now. Well, that sucks, because that's not the game we're talking about today. No, rather, we're looking at this abomination. Wait. Which was developed to tie in with the 2008 film The Incredible Hulk. And it's the first Hulk game I've ever played. Is it weird to say I'm sorry to yourself? So it's worth noting that in the last video, I claimed that these MCU games were developed by Sega, but that's not actually quite accurate. Sega just published these games, but of course they've got their pretty blue logo all over the box art, but the credit or blame for the actual creation process of today's subject actually go to a studio called Edge of Reality. I've looked into the other games they've developed and it's not a great track record. So is there any merit to this game? Or is it just every issue that I had with Iron Man, but blown up to Hulk-sized proportions? <laughs> Things actually aren't so bad at the start. I actually think this title screen is kind of funny. Everything in the background is in just absolute chaos, and it adds a weird sense of charm to the whole thing. It even has a dynamic element where pushing start causes the man of the hour to crash through the wall onto the screen properly, and I think that's kind of a cute touch. Wait, what's this achievement all about? I haven't even started playing yet. Eh, it's probably not important. Everything goes downhill once you start the game. For one thing, these cutscenes are kind of hilarious in their ineptitude. They're so short and offer so little context for what's actually going on that they almost might as well not be there at all. I feel like if you haven't seen the movie, you really aren't gonna know what's going on most of the time, but then again, you might still have that problem because 80% of this game is all made up stuff that has nothing to do with the film that the game is based on. You do have elements of it here. General Ross is using the military to hunt down Bruce Banner and said man on the run is trying to develop a cure for his condition. New to the mix are Rick Jones and the Enclave. So who is Rick Jones? Well, from what I can tell, and again, I'm not an expert, but I think he's like Bruce Banner's best friend and they kind of go on the run together a lot of the time, but in this game, he's just some guy that you find that's trying to bring down the Enclave, some crazy terrorist organization in New York City that's developing weapons and using the island of Manhattan as a testing ground for them. Well, that's not good. I mean, not only does it totally give away where they operate, but with all the constant and reconstruction it causes, it's just gonna make living over there harder than it already is. I mean, have you seen the rent prices in New York? Rick Jones basically recruits Bruce early on in the game to use the Hulk as a weapon against the Enclave and also occasionally butt heads with the military. They also find this guy, Dr. Stearns, who's helping Bruce develop his gamma cure throughout the course of the game, and oh boy, does it take a while for that to go anywhere. But in case you're wondering what kind of crazy locales you'll be visiting as the Hulk to dismantle the Enclave, the answer is like two. You get this facility in like, I think Portugal during the tutorial mission, but after that, the entire rest of the game takes place in New York, which I mean is fine. Superhero games do that all the time, but the problem is that most other superheroes have more to do in that environment than the Hulk does in this game. I lost track of how many missions there were in this game, but I want to say there's around like 50 or so, and the length can be really inconsistent. I've tackled some that go on for like 15 to 20 minutes, but there are others that are over in less than five. You know what's very consistent in these missions though? The variety of activities. Cause there is none. Actually, I think I can sum up the depth of gameplay in about two words. Hulk. <sighs> Smash. Yeah, boy. There it is. 
that's the entire game. Running around in missions, taking down the Enclave, fighting against the military, running around in the city. It doesn't matter which of these situations you're in, you're constantly doing the same thing, which is just running around and breaking things. You punch people, you punch vehicles, you punch buildings until they collapse in the most hilariously stupid way I have ever seen, and you punch the occasional boss that shows up. Sure, you can pick up objects and use them as weapons. Sure, you can fight in the streets or on top of buildings, but so much of my time playing this game was just using the most bare bones method of attack on all of the same enemies over and over and over and over and over again. A simple gameplay structure or gimmick can work, but the Hulk's moveset in this game feels pretty limited. Combos aren't particularly fun or satisfying to pull off, and jumping around and breaking stuff loses its charm very quickly. And you know, maybe, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. I mean, after finishing Iron Man, I still said I enjoyed that game on at least some level, even though it was still really repetitive and you're doing mostly the same thing for the entire runtime of that game, but that game is also like four hours long. This one's like 10. Run around and punch stuff, run around and punch stuff, run around and punch stuff. I'm having so much trouble finding the words to describe what you even do in this game because it feels like there's just nothing to it. They have an almost GTA element in the open world part of the game outside of the missions where if you spend enough time destroying the city because there's just nothing better to do, the military takes notice and starts sending hordes of enemies at you, but again, the depth of combat is so shallow that it doesn't make the waves of enemies any fun or add any tension. I just found myself fighting until I eventually died and moving on to the next mission whenever I got bored which was, you know, a lot. Some missions will add elements like time restraints on certain objectives or that you're getting chased down by missiles raining from the sky and these add small moments of variety and excitement but there's so few of these types of missions and it really speaks to the fact that this game would have been a lot better if it was shorter and the activities within missions themselves were more fleshed out and developed. The allocation of resources was targeted to all of the wrong places here. I mean there is an open world city to explore, right? Well there's three factors kind of getting in the way there. The first is that traveling around the city is slow and cumbersome. Well, the Hulk is a big guy. He should be pretty slow, right? Wrong. One of the most terrifying aspects of the Hulk is that even despite his size, he's incredibly fast, and beyond just ground speed, his jumping skills are incredible. Comic book Hulk could probably leap the entire length of Manhattan in a single bound, all right? Those leg muscles do not lie. But in this game, jumping is just weak. I feel like I'm not covering a lot of distance with these jumps, which means that I've got to do a lot of climbing on buildings, which is slow, tedious, and not fun. What doesn't help is that when I grab onto a building and start climbing, my natural instinct is to hit the jump button so I can leap myself up higher, because this game has taught me that hitting A means I'm gonna be higher up than I was before, but it doesn't work like that. If you hit the A button while on a wall, you don't launch yourself up the wall, instead you turn around like a big green idiot and launch yourself away from it. No, that's not what I wanted to do! Hulk, please just get back here! Okay, so height is both but what about distance? The jump covers a decent enough amount of ground, but I was baffled when I finally unlocked a sprinting option and found that sprinting before going into a jump doesn't change how far you travel during that jump. Like, no, guys, you can't do that. Just a couple of lines of code and you can set the Hulk to carry his momentum from a sprint into his jumping animation. You guys should know this. If I'm sprinting, my jumps shouldn't just take me further, but they should probably make me go a little faster too. The guys developing Spider-Man 2 had already figured this out with a web swinging. This is not a problem that needs to exist. Second problem with the open world travel is the lack of things to do. You can smash stuff. Yay, we've been over this, but what about other than that? You can't pull off tricks while jumping around like the world's heaviest lunatic or anything. There's no civilians to have fun interactions with. Okay, actually, you know what? Scratch that last part because it is kind of hilarious watching the AI of these people absolutely losing their minds at the sight of the Hulk just standing in one place. Other than that, there are a couple of things to collect. Canisters to upgrade your health and rage, which will help you use powerful attacks during combat, but I usually just use my rage meter to heal myself. If you destroy a landmark in the city, you get a special little token for it. I hope Tony Stark doesn't mind that I just sent Stark Tower barreling to the depths of Hades for the sake of nabbing this souvenir. And yep, that's the whole list. That's it. That, that's everything that you can find in the city. The, the allure of this place is absolutely non-existent. The final problem with exploring in this game is the low 
functionality. I mean, this thing crashed on me like three times during recording. The audio was constantly bugging out and would often just stop playing altogether. And man, these graphics were bad. Going for realism was just not a good idea here. I can't, I can't take this anymore. Let's just please wrap this up. After suffering through the game for, again, 10 whole hours, you see some really poorly executed buildup where the game is trying to convince me that this Blonsky guy here on Ross's strike team is my main rival and he's trying to use his super soldier serum to hunt down the Hulk and yada, yada, yada. He's about as much of a joke in the game as he is in the movie. Is that all you got? You know what actually did kind of grab my attention though? Eventually, the military starts using people from Stark Industries outfitted in Hulkbuster armors, which is actually kind of cool. Remember that this is way back when the whole cinematic universe idea was still really new and exciting, and I honestly wasn't expecting anything quite like this. Still doesn't make any sense though. Like, Tony Stark's whole deal is not letting anyone other than himself or his best friend use his suits, so... It, it, whatever, it, I guess it was cool for like 15 minutes. Eventually, Bruce and the gang try and fail to cure him of the Hulk. Bruce gets arrested. Blonsky still insists that he matters and forces Stearns to inject him with the gamma radiation, turning him into the abomination. And one really boring final boss fight later, the game rushes itself into ending and the credits finally finally start rolling. I still had a couple of nice things to say about Iron Man when I was done with that game, but I don't know if I can do the same for this. I think I actually might hate this game. Y you know what, jokes aside, out of all of the games I've had to sit down and play to record footage for a review, this might be the worst time I've ever had doing it. I dreaded the entire time. It was so boring and dull and it went on forever. It felt like it was never going to end, but there was one little thing that did make me smile. Remember that shellhead achievement that I got when booting up the game before I even did anything? Well, once I beat the main story, I went into the extras menu and I discovered that if you have an Iron Man save file on your hard drive when you start up the game, you get something kind of special to mess around with in the open world. This doesn't make up for wasting my Saturday recording footage of this game, but I have to admit, I actually had some fun with this part. Well, we do have another Iron Man game to look at, so maybe they were able to take the best parts from the first game, flesh them out a bit more, make a better experience out of it, but if I'm being totally honest, I think my optimism is starting to die out a little bit, but we won't know for sure until next week we look at Iron Man 2. Until then, you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, whichever you prefer, links in the description, and of course, as always, spread the word, tell your friends, and until we see each other again, thank you so much for watching. See you next mission. Well, hello, hello, welcome to the end of the video. Not a whole lot of new stuff to say this time around, uh, but I do wanna go ahead and just express my gratitude. Like, I've been seeing the community behind this channel growing a lot and, and much faster recently too, and honestly guys, just thank you so much for that. The numbers are one thing, but to see like new people, new faces coming in and seeing and enjoying my content, that means the world to me, it really does. And if you wanna help keep that growth going, the easiest way to do that is by sharing videos around, you know, liking them, commenting on them, all of that good stuff. It really helps with the whole algorithm thing. And of course, uh, I do have my Patreon page as well. If you would consider donating, I do do like blooper reels and stuff like that for certain tiers on Patreon. There's early access to videos, uh, access to my scripts, stuff like that. I, I try to throw in some goodies there. And of course, there are also other resources to get in touch with me. I'm gonna start trying to stream more again soon, just trying to get a, a hang of the new schedule. But of course, I do want to go ahead and give a very special shout out to my top tier patrons, those being Patricia Marku and Christine Larkin. Your guys' undying support means the absolute world to me. I would not be able to do this without you guys, and thank you so, so much. Well, anyway, I've got another video to get ready for, so if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and get started on that probably tonight. As always, thank you so much for stopping by. I have been Wayne. The Incredible Hulk is infuriating, and please remember to always be nice to your retail workers. All right, peace.